Um, is it just Damesh and you make that can do certain things? Go ahead. Could you be filming what team you're on as well? Tropical. What group you're a part of? Tropical Forest. Tropical, and, and your name is? Daniel Ricketts. Rupi? Daniel Ricketts. All right, Daniel Ricketts. Okay. And what, what was your answer, Daniel Ricketts? Um, that a robot is a machine you make that can do certain things. Okay. Not about anybody else? <laughs> All right. So, Daniel Ricketts, you are indeed correct. It is um, a machine. But let's go into a more um, detailed answer into what a robot actually is. I'm sorry, guys, I'm experiencing a connection problem, so the slides are take a while to change. All right, so what is a robot? A robot is any machine designed to execute one or more tasks remote controlled or automatically with speed and precision. There are as many different types of robots as there are tasks for them to perform. So robots can be, as I was saying earlier, remote controlled or autonomous. So to the right of your screen, you're going to see different types of robots. Normally when we hear the name robots, we think about machines that resemble humans, but not all robots resemble humans. Some robots are of different shapes, sizes. As long as they execute one or more tasks, remote control or autom are automatically, they are considered a robot. So your car would be an example of something that works as a robot. So anyone, what do you think is involved in building a robot? Oh, I see that Daniel has her hand raised. You can try unmuting your mic, Daniel. Um, so probably te technology. Yeah, go ahead. Wiring. Wiring. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good answer. So that's all a part of it. So wiring, equipment, technology, yes, they're all a part of what is involved in building a, a robot. Sorry, it was also saying um, plan and design as well. Plan and design, yes. Correct. All right, so that those, so none of you guys are wrong. Those are all what are involved in building a robot. So later on, later on in the presentation, we'll see a more, more in-depth of what is involved in actually building a robot. So for this presentation, presentation, what we're going to actually go through is requirements for robotics, robotics tools and equipments, um, particularly controllers, sensors, batteries, etc. Uh, we're going to go through assembling and we're going to also go through programming. So requirements for robotics. So some basic requirements is mathematics, computer science, and programming and physics. So when you're building any robot, you need to have a, so for those of you who ha, are, have not done mathematics, computer science and programming or physics and are interested in doing robotics, you know that if you're interested, you need to um, have math, computer science and programming and physics. You need to understand the mathematics behind what you're doing. You need to also have the computer science because you need to understand technology and you need to be able to program this robot or in other terms, code. So uh, many of you guys who play games or watch cartoons, you may hear a lot about coding and hacking. 
and all of those kinds of stuff. And they're all a part of what, of the knowledge base that you need for robotics. And you need physics. You need to understand um, equipment, how the equipment functions, how it moves, so you're able to create um, as best design as you can. So robotics tools and equipment. So, so robotics tools and equipment. So. Give me a moment, guys. All right, so there are several tools and equipment that are involved when making a robot. These include motors, sensors, building elements, batteries, controllers, and the list goes on and on. And you have also materials such as robots are not limited to just metal. You can use cardboard, you can use paper, you can use plastic. It doesn't matter what the material is. As long as you can as long as you can utilize that material, you can build it. So it's not limited to. So don't just think that you need metal or you need aluminum or you need you need any kind of metal or steel to build a robot because that's what you see on TV or you see in the or you see in the books. No, you don't need metal, steel, or any of those stuff. All you need is any kind of material. As long as you can make it work as the designer, it can work. So robotics equipment, tools and equipment. So what I did was just put in a simple image of some basic equipment that are used in robotics. So you have equipment there such as channels. Those are aluminum there's an aluminum material that we use to compose the body of the robot, or what we call it, or we also call the base of the robot, the chassis. So we have different brackets, we have different gears, we have wheels, we have batteries, we have screwdrivers, we have uh, metal plates, we have servers, we have servers. We have all different kind of equipment here that we use to um, compose our, the robot or build the robot and wires as I think it's the circuits that said earlier. So we also see some wires. So these are some pro programming equipment. So to the far left, that big box that you see there, purple, it's what we call the computer, con the robot controller. They come in all different shapes, sizes, and what they and they are used primarily to control the robot. So they so what happens is that this robot controller is like the brain. I don't most of you guys have computers and you know something that re, you regard as a CPU or the system in which we always call the brain of the computer, the processor, it does all the work. This is what does all the work basically for our the robot, it ensures that all parts are working, it connects everything together. So without it, the robot won't function. So I just named a few um, robotic suppliers or dealers that you guys, for those of, so those persons that are interested in STEM program to start out with, you have the Pitsco um, Tetrix, and you have Andy Mark, there are just a few um, top, uh, some of the suppliers of robotics equipment for those of you who are interested who want to both um, have it at your school or you want to do it on your own, you can get the equipment from them to start out and understand what you need to do or what you need to get to start building. Our, you know, you can fool around a little with the, with the equipment and make different designs and see what it's like. So assembling. So there are several guidance that are in are used before creating a robot. These include so these are just some of the guidelines that I used while I was the chief engineer. So the first step is that you have to analyze. You have to analyze what is the problem. 
So you need you, you see a you have to see a problem and you know okay, what is the problem? What do I need to build the robot to do? So without a problem, then there you can't build a robot. There has to be a problem. What you want the robot to do? Do you want it to um, type? Do you want it to lift equipment? Do you want it to um? Do you want it to let's say um count money? That's uh, that's what you do. So after you have uh, analyzed what the problem is, you go ahead to um imagination. Think of all the possible combinations what you can do. You start to imagine stuff. Huh? You start to conceptualize some ideas. Huh? You start. You can go ahead and do some research and say, hey, I'm going to um research. What do I need? What I'm going to look at a few designs and get some ideas of what I can do of my own on my own. Then after you have done, you have imagined, you have imagined those stuff and you conceptualize. You start to brainstorm. You get a group. You have a group or a team around you, and guys start to brainstorm ideas. And from brainstorming, you come up with a whole bunch of ideas, a whole bunch of robotic designs that you can implement to fix that one problem. After you have Adequately, after you have brainstormed, you go ahead and draw. When you draw, or someone I think earlier said plans, so you draft up a plan, yes. So you want to show others around you how you're going to make this work. There are a few softwares out there that you can use to draw these robots for those of you who are interested. And there you have like AutoCAD Inventor where you can take the, the, the arm the parts of the robot, put fit them together and see what it looks like. And you can also provide some hand drawings. So some of you guys who are artists, that's also a good requirement too. Robotics involves a lot of um, drawings as well. So for those of you who love to draw or love visual arts, you also are an asset to any robotics team because you must be able to um, convey those ideas or represent your ideas that you have in your head to others to let them understand what you're doing. Because one part about robotics and STEM, it's teamwork. It's a, it, it has a lot to do with teamwork. So no man is an island and no man stands alone. Everyone works together to achieve the goal. So you have to get the material as well. So Material can be wood, it can be aluminum, it can be cardboard, it can be paper, it can be plastic, it can be anything. That, so you gather any material that you, that you can use to, um, to, get those, to get those ideas across. We, back then, when I was in robotics, right, I once wanted to make a lift. And in order to make that lift, we had, we had no money to really buy some of the most expensive equipment around to make that lift. So some of you guys, we use, some of you guys may know um, draw slides, um, slides. So when you pull out a draw, you notice there's a, mechanic, there's a mechanism at the side that pulls out the draw. We utilize some of those in order to make lifts for our robot. So as I, that's what I'm saying, the sky is the limit. As long as you can get the material and let it work, it will work. And in your, pro, your production of the robot, so you produce the robot, you, you, you uh, make the robot, you build it, and then you start testing your ideas out. So you test if, the, if your ideas work. Because sometimes it's a lot of troubleshooting is involved when you are building a robot. So you'll find that, hey, it looks really good in your head, but when you actually build it and you actually look at the math, the physics behind it, or even look into the um, computer science portion of it, you will realize that, hey, this idea was so good in your head, but when you actually made it, it actually, it actually is not working. So you have to go back to the drawing board and start over the process all over again until you get the idea that actually works. So assembling, after you have completed those steps, the assembly process begins. So what we do is that we, we start by making the frame or the chassis. 
So what we refer to as the, the frame is the body of the robot. Huh? Right? We start making it. Huh? We, we start putting wheels on the robot. We start putting feet on the robot. Whatever is the robot, whatever the robot is um, designed to do. We gather um, construction material. So as I was explaining earlier, the construction material are not limited. Huh? So you get those materials, you start connecting wheels to motors because huh? the motors will spin the wheels. Huh? You start connecting motors to controllers. The controllers will, will send a signal to the motors to tell them to start. Huh? You start connecting batteries to the controller because without any power, your robot won't work. It's just, it's just the metal, wood, whatever you make it out of. Huh? You start connecting motor controllers to robot controllers. Huh? So you connect those con the controllers that control the motors, you connect them to the controller. So the controller sends the, this, the, this, the current to these controllers and, and give them the up and uh, um, allows them to operate. Huh? Then we start connecting centers to the main controllers. So earlier I had given a definition of uh, robots and I had said some robots perform a task with a remote controlled or autonomous. Huh? So for those, Robots that are autonomous, right? You want them to be controlled using sensors. So you may want to, so these, so when I, when I say autonomous, I mean as in you are not controlling the robot any at all. You give the robot a specific instruction and that robot carries out that instruction without you having to, to um, control it or select anything. You just say, okay, I want my robot to say good morning every morning at 7 a.m. So every morning at 7 a.m., the robot will say good morning. That's autonomous. Or I want the robot to move over. I want the robot to move three feet, um, three, three um, feet to the left or, and, and two feet forward. Eh? The robot does that by itself. That's autonomous. So, so I'm not controlling it. I'm not using a controller. Some of you guys may have had um, toy cars or toy cars, you know, and you may have, have had a controller and you, you were controlling, that's what we, we classify as a remote controlled robot. But now anything that does outside of that, that does the work, that's call it, that receives instructions and you are not controlling it, it's autonomous. We also now connect communication devices to robot controllers. So what happens is that we have communication devices. Normally, they are in the form of phones. Well, from we specifically, we use phones, but you have other um, controllers, uh, well, other communication devices that you can use. But back then, when I, when, I was, when I was building robots, we used phones. So what, the, what we do is we make the code, and when we get we make the code, we upload it to the phone, and that phone acts as a receiver. And what we do is, when the code is on the phone, we have another phone, and that next phone is connected to the controller, the remote controller, right? And we what we do is we have one phone send a signal to the next phone to the robot. So it kind of works like Bluetooth. It's basically Bluetooth. And you send that signal across and you operate the robot from there. So I have just a small video I need to show you guys. Has everyone seen the video? Is everyone seen the video? I haven't seen anything. Is that yeah. entertaining? Hold on. Let me try it again. Just see a link on the screen. Are you seeing this now? Yes, so we're, we're seeing it now. Okay, great.
are we supposed to be hearing talking? Yeah, hello? Yes, and we're supposed to be hearing something because I'm not hearing anything. Someone saying something? Yeah, is the the video, is it supposed to have sound? Because I'm only seeing um, the pictures moving by, but I'm not hearing anything. Okay, it seems like Marcelo had some internet issues. I'm going to see if I can get him back online, but he currently is no longer in the chat. Just hold on for a few minutes. Let me see what is going on. Okay, so I'm getting in contact with Marcel now. He said his Zoom call ended. So just even a few minutes, he's going to try to um log back in. Okay, so Marcelo is back, everyone. Just give him a few minutes to compose. Marcelo? Yes, I'm back. Okay, all right. Apologies. Everyone seen the screen? I've seen the screen, but what I was concerned about before was if we're supposed to be hearing something because I wasn't hearing anything in the video. I was just seeing the pictures pass by. Oh, no, there is nothing being said. Everything that oh. is being said is written on the screen. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Just wanted to confirm that. No problem. Okay.
So what I just showed you was a video of the steps, the different assembly processes. So as you can see, they started out by making the frame and their frame was um, made out of cardboard. So when I was telling you guys earlier that your robot is not limited to um, a specific material, anything that you have at home can be utilized to make a robot. So they gathered the, their construction materials, so they had their wheels, they had their motor, their, their robot controllers, they had their batteries, they had their battery holder, they had all of those stuff. They started by, in the video earlier, they connected a wheel to a motor and the motor was illustrated at the, the base of the, of the robot. So they connected a wheel to it and then they realized, hey, the wheel that they were using, they wanted to have more traction. So depending on the problem, maybe the problem is that they needed to be climbing something steep so they needed or something slippery so they needed more traction so you went with some traction wheels so you saw them with some wheels with some with some tracks on them they then they connected those motors to the controller they placed the battery and the batteries you saw underneath the cardboard design they connected the the um, motor controller to the robot, so they had some control, some motor controllers at, and the, at, to the back of the robot. They and they, well, this robot in particular didn't have any sensors on it, and they had their communication device, which I said was what what they used as their communication devices was the um the robot controller, because they actually. Because you have some robot controllers out there that you really don't need a phone. You have some pre, how could I put it? You have some that are pre-coded to just carry out a specific task. Some of which you you buy like your tar cars, your toy planes, etc. So programming. Programming is probably the final step in a robot designer. And it is probably one of the critical steps because without programming or coding, then the robot does absolutely nothing. It's just, as I was saying earlier, it's just a frame of steel, cardboard, plastic. It's lifeless. So I'm going to just show you guys two videos. Guys, let me know if you are hearing this video. Are you guys hearing? No, I'm not hearing. Oh, you're I'm not, not hearing. hearing? All right. To learn to code. I was telling Tia. Are you guys hearing now? Yeah, we're hearing now. Okay, great. Welcome to Learning Mall. I am very excited as I have started to learn to code. I was telling James all about it and he asked, What is coding? Now, this was a very good question and the very same thing that I had asked Mum yesterday before we started. My mum told me coding is a term for computer programming 
It is how you give a computer an instruction. I have also discovered that there are different coding languages. Programmers use one or more computer programming languages to give these instructions to computers. For example, programmers working at Google might use C++, Java, JavaScript or Python. Video game programmers at Nintendo might use C++, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript or SQL. Some coding languages even use visual blocks, such as Locally. Actually, I have started using visual blocks to help me build a Minecraft mod. There are many languages in the world today, but the same concept and conventions are shared by nearly all of them. What is even more exciting is that I also got a new computer so that I can code as much as I like. But did you know that you can also code on iPads and even on mobile phones? What I have also discovered is that there are different styles or methods of coding. Visual block and text-based coding. Now I had to do some research on these as I was not really sure what they meant at the beginning, but now I do. I am starting with visual block platforms. As you can see on my computer screen, visual block platforms allow you to place and snap together virtual code blocks and create games, apps and more. They are a really good place to start. They are designed to be fun and easy, but they are also designed to be tools that you outgrow. Text-based coding. Text-based coding programs generally use real programming languages either within a closed platform or real text editors. These are more difficult to use but when I become more advanced, I will start to learn these. I hope you enjoy learning with me. See you soon. Alright guys, so I'm just going to show you one more video. We're not seeing anything. Marcella, we're not here need though. You're hearing you're introducing you're hearing scratch. Now? Yes, I'm hearing no. Introducing scratch. All the games in this book are made with a programming language called Scratch. Scratch is easy to learn because you don't have to type any complicated code. 
Instead, you build programs from ready-made blocks. Getting started. A project from scratch usually starts with choosing what objects or sprites you will appear in the game. Sketch is a large library of ready-made sprites to get you started. Sprites. Sprites are the things that move about or react in the game. They can be anything from animals and people, pizzas, or spaceships. You can bring each sprite to life on screen with a list of instructions called a script. Scripts. Scripts are made up of blocks that you can drag with the computer mouse and join together like jigsaw pieces. Each block contains one instruction, so it's easy to understand. Working together. Games are usually made up of several sprites working together, each controlled by their own script. Scripts make sprites move about, crash into each other, create sounds, and change color or shape. Some sprites act as enemies to make a game more difficult. A typical scratch project. Once you've built a script, you can click the green flag to see what it does. All the action takes place in a part of the scratch window called the stage. Sprites move about on the stage, often in front of a background image that helps create atmosphere. Running a program. Starting or running a program activates the scripts that you've built. To make the stage fill your whole computer screen, click the blue symbol on the top left. To stop the program, press the red button on the top right. Making sprites move. In a typical game, the player moves one sprite and the other sprites are programmed to move automatically. The script below makes the dinosaur in this project chase the cat. When the green flag is clicked, the dinosaur will point to the cat. Move forward 15 steps. Adding the forever block keeps the sprite moving endlessly. Okay, alright, so those were just two videos about different kinds of programming softwares that we use. So you may have noticed in the video, they spoke about some advanced programming software and they talked about basic ones. So I had two videos that last one was about um, a different variation of a simple programming software that you that people as beginner programmers can use you guys can also go online download it and play play a little bit around with it normally for people normally for individuals or students that are just starting in robotics you normally use the use the easy programming software so they're very easy to use easy to understand until you reach to a level that you can understand different functions and um you understand different functions and different parts of the programming language and different loops then you go on to the advanced kind of programming software which i i normally utilize when i'm building robots so Question, can anyone give me a example of a text-based programming software? Come on guys, don't be afraid to answer. Does it matter if you answer right or wrong? Can you repeat? Can you, oh, okay, no problem. Could you give me an example of a text-based um, programming language? Script? Okay, all right. Well, I, so it's not, you're not wrong. So JavaScript, yes. Anyone else? Python? Correct. Anyone else? C++. All 
All right. So, so yeah. All right. So, so those are, and um, all the guys that answered. What um group are you a part of? I'm in wetland. Tropical forest. You're part of what? I'm a part tropical of tropical forest. forest. So all you guys are a part of tropical forest. So. And we also have a wetland though. All right. So you guys are all correct. Thank you for Oh, we also have one wetland. Okay. I've not been hearing much from the wetlanders. So no problem. So what I want you guys to do, maybe we... what I want you guys to do is now give me one example. I had showed you guys two visual based platforms huh? and they were noted as the easier programming language to use so anyone can give me um, any example of the of a visual based platform don't be afraid guys no answer is wrong blockly and scratch Correct. So that's correct. So programming programming is usually the final step involving the construction of a robot. As I said earlier, the more it's probably the um exciting part because when you actually build this whole robot, you want it to move, you want it to do something. Huh? You don't just want a whole um block of metal or board there. So programming is what gives life to the robot. Eh? It's what makes it alive. Eh? They, and as we were saying earlier, there are many programming languages which are utilized in programming a robot. Eh? And as uh, one of your colleagues said, Scratch programming, which is a visual block program, Blockly, which are blocked again. We have Java, Python, C++, which are all text-based coding programs. Eh? So, Marcel, somebody is asking in the chat if we can remind them of the materials that they need. Oh, the material that they need? Any material can be used to build a robot. So, I was saying earlier, can you, when, I, when I had showed you guys the video earlier, they had used cardboard. So you're not limited to anything. I had given you two. Let me go back. I have given you two companies. That can give an idea of some materials that you can use. I give you ideas of materials that you can make or, or craft yourself. And that's Tetrix and Andy Mark. So if you go on their page, you'll see them with a whole range of uh, um, robotics materials and wheels and all of those kind of things. Because, hey, it all depends on what you want to do with your robot. Huh? So you can even make a robot out of wood. It can be out of it can be out of plastic. Doesn't matter. You get to go online, do your research, look at what you want your robot to do, and you get any material. As long as you can make it into what you want it, you can use it. Where are we? So I am just before I end, I'm going to just show you guys a small slideshow. Give me a moment. Everyone seen the slideshow? We're, we're seeing it.
Guys, what I just showed you was just a few examples of some robots that I have made. If you were looking, clearly you'd have seen that I, although most of the, the chassis of the robot or the body of the robot is metal, there are some few household equipment that are utilized on that robot. You may have seen a PVC pipe at the back that we utilize that here as a lift. At the front, you see some um, plastic looking, um, how can I put it? Strings at the front. Those are what we call tie straps. And I don't know how many of you guys know about surgical tubing. Normally, it, normally the surgical tubing is on the is normally on the stethoscope that the um, doctors use. It's um, it's like a very, oh, it's a tube-like thing. It's a tube-like uh, material that doctors use. It's normally in the medical field that uh, we made use of it. So what we actually had called the mechanism at the front was that year was it was a sweeper system that I we had invented. So what it does is. When the robot goes in front of uh, balls or bricks because we compete competitively, that sweeper system acts as a, as, a, as a rake, a rotating rake, and it carries up the debris onto, into the robot. So it basically collects the um, debris or we we'll call it little items that we use in game. And then to the side, and I saw there a small video, it was that year, it was a catapult. So that year we were um that year we were asked to make a system that uh, can fire particles and shoot them basically into a hoop. So we created a catapult using surgical tubing springs, and that's where math comes in because. And in that, at that point in time, we needed to basically calculate the trajectory that the balls would um, go. So you're supposed to be able to plot the trajectory. So you need to plot the path. You need to, to know, to calculate the math necessary to give the balls the necessary force. So how much force are you going to apply to those, to that motor to make that, how much force do you need to push that ball up into the air? And I'm just going to show you a small video of the end result. Oh. Hello? Give me a moment, guys.
Are you guys seeing my screen? Are you seeing a video? We see your screen and um. Are you seeing a video, guys? We we, not, we don't see a video, just various videos um on your desktop. Oh, hold on. Guys, I've seen the presentation now. Yes, we've seen a video now. I think you need to turn up your um sound. Oh no, there's there's no sound. Oh okay, okay, All right. Yeah, there's just a video. So, thank you guys for your time, and that concludes my presentation. The video that I showed you was just the catapult system that we had implemented that year. So, with, what you guys need to note is that with every robotic design, you're going to have some challenges. That that year. We um, particularly had challenges as it relates to the spring because after shooting those balls after a while, the spring got very weak and it lost some of its elasticity. So some of you guys will learn about, in physics, if you have already learned about it, you learn about stress and strain. So after a while, the um spring went under significant stress and then with time it was we could we had to keep on changing the springs that we utilize to shoot those balls as well as in the video that we showed i showed you where you saw a, a, earlier with you saw a guy um turning a wheel that system at the bottom was implemented to um assist with the motor because building a catapult system it put a, it had put a lot of stress on the motor so you would find that after using it after a while the motors would become damaged they would get hot they would basically burn all out so we had to find a system to basically ease some of the stress that the motor was experiencing so with every engineering with every robotic robot you experience your challenges is just how you rise above them how innovative you can be how creative you can be robots can be made out of any material nothing in spe nothing specific because when we when i started out doing robotics 
we could not really afford some of those expensive equipment that you'll see on the tech trick side and the mark side these equipment are very expensive and sometimes we couldn't afford them and we were competing with some of the uh, more wealthier countries like china us australia all of these kind of uh, germany they were all there and we went there and we didn't have the resources or the financial capabilities like these other countries and we had to innovate and utilize other materials to make our design art. so i'm just saying the same to you guys like nothing is specific for robots i hope you guys learned a lot and i'm feel free to ask me any questions at this time